Hi everybody, my name is Khadija Latimer and I am an elementary school art teacher here in South Carolina. And today I'm going to be sharing the day in the life as an art teacher experience with you and I'm super excited. So I hope today is truly authentic and you can really see what it's like being an art teacher. I'm sure you understand the struggles and the successes of every single day, but to see, you know, the ugly parts of the day as well, the messy rooms, the artwork that's all over the place, the challenges of the day. And again, we don't want to forget the positive things that happen throughout the day as well. So today I am going to be sharing some self-portrait resources because my fourth graders and third graders are currently working on self-portraits and my fifth graders are currently working on their dragon eyes. So today we're going to pause on those and we're going to be working on self-assessments and we're going to be working on a gallery walk assessment so that they can get advice from their peers on how they can improve their artwork along with some organizational skills that really help me and our lifesavers. We can all use those, right? So buckle in. Let's see what the day gives us. We have no idea. That's the joys of being a teacher. Every day is extremely different. And if you love this video, don't forget to subscribe to The Art of Ed here on YouTube so you can see more. All right, let's get started. So good morning. I am officially up for today. This is, this is it, fabulous. And I need to go ahead and have my breakfast. Uh, I don't do all that fancy stuff in the morning because there's no time, okay? So we're gonna eat a bagel, some peanut butter on it. If you're not putting peanut butter on your bagel in the morning, what are you doing? And then I have to get ready because we have things to do, okay? I don't have time. I'm literally like taking braids out like just to have a little crinkle because like I'm not about to plug up a curl. Like, I don't have the time. That will never be me. But for me, 15 minutes tops, we're out the door. Like we don't have time for the shenanigans, okay? It is what it is. I, I'm coming to work today, right? That's what we're doing. Okay, so yeah, 15 minutes. I'm literally sweating right now. You know, but it's gonna be a good day. It's gonna be a good day. Okay, <laughs> so another moment of transparency. Um, I normally spend 15 minutes getting ready every morning because normally I'm almost late to school every day. Let's not pretend that teachers are always on time. I am not. <laughs> so I'm getting ready to grab my water bottle, literally my best friend that I take to school almost every day. And we are ready to head to school. So I will see you there. Okay, so I am officially at school. I have done my morning duty and I've already had my first class of the day and so now I want to take out a little bit of time to show you uh, my classroom, my space that I am in majority of the week uh, and some of my favorite areas in my classroom that make my life a whole lot easier. So let's take our tour. Okay, so this is a quick overview of what my classroom looks like on an everyday basis. I am at two schools currently. I am lucky to have storage space here at this school. So back here in this closet is my supply closet. It is in shambles, beware. <laughs> it's just that time of the year. So I have tons of space. I also have a lot of space to put any projects and divide them out for every class. Again, normally it is not this chaotic. I'm extremely organized, but life is definitely getting the best of me right now, especially being at two schools during this time of the year where we have art shows, multiple art shows. So yeah, just, just excuse the mess. This storage room has my kiln. I also have a lot of room back here. I normally have clay down here, so Whenever I do clay projects, I always have enough room to separate classes. All right, so another favorite area in my classroom is my drawing guides wall. So here I have all of my drawing guides that I've created um, organized into these clear color colorful folders. And whenever I need a particular drawing guide, I can grab the folder and pass them out. Um, me personally, I rely heavily on drawing guides because they help me when I'm teaching. 
and students like to have something close by that they can reference. So I use these a lot in my classroom and I definitely enjoy making them. But this definitely keeps me organized uh, for any lessons that are centered around drawing. I've created visual aids that help me know what materials the classes need for the day. And it also helps the students know how many jobs we might need for the day as far as passing things out. And whenever we need a new supply for the day, I can just kind of pick out the ones that we might need and I can just pop them on the board and the students know exactly what they need for the day. So it's just a quick and easy way to update students on supplies. Okay, so it is finally lunchtime. I am starving. Um, I actually get to eat in my classroom here at this school. So I turned my lights off and I warmed up my little tacos. <laughs> so I'm gonna eat both of them really fast and drink some water really quickly. And then I actually have to use part of my lunchtime to prep for my fifth graders. So I will be sharing what they are working on soon. So I'll catch you after lunch. So here are the two resources that I made that we're using for this lesson. So this is my ultimate portrait guide, but I created this one because um, I was having trouble finding resources with very diverse hairstyles um, and nose shapes and things like that. So I decided to make this one um, so that it can cater to all of the students that I have. And then this is what we're using for the background. So I use my low contrast, high contrast, Zentangle designs um, to teach about balance and to um, show students the difference between designs that have low contrast and designs that have high contrast and how we can use both um, to add interest in our backgrounds when we're doing this lesson in particular. So here are a couple of them. Uh, these are not done yet, this is just in progress, but so far I'm really proud of how well they're using um, the high contrast and low contrast sheets to add that balance in the background. So today was our first day adding the Zentangles. So next time that they come, um, we're gonna do a gallery walk where students will walk around and give feedback on um, the backgrounds and the portraits. Uh, so for example, one thing we would talk about Say for example, we were looking at this one, what could this person do to add a little bit more high contrast on this side because it's a little bit on the low contrast side, right? Or what could this person do to finish this off? It looks really good so far. We can see low, high, low, high. Um, but is this one really heavy? So what could they do to kind of balance it off on the other side? So I'm really proud of the progress that they are making so far. Okay, so it's currently two o'clock in the afternoon. My fifth grade class just left. Right now, my fifth grade classes are working on their dragon eye drawings. And so today we took a break from the drawings and we did a gallery walk. And I actually found this gallery walk feedback sheet in my pro account for the art of education. And so I printed these out for each student. And basically um, each student chose three things that they would like feedback on. And we had three to four students actually review the artwork. So right now they still have their papers on their desk. So I found two that did a really good job giving feedback. So I got each student to put their artwork off to the side beside their page. And then, um, of course, they wrote the three things that they wanted feedback on. So this person put how the scales look, um, any overall feedback, and they wanted feedback on the lines that they used. And so the students would just look at the artwork. And then in each square, um, each student would write feedback for this person. So the first one says, you did a really good, you did really good, but there are a lot of pencil marks. So that person knew to kind of go back with their eraser and get rid of any pencil marks that they might have found. And then let's see this one. Um, the student looked at the artwork and one of the spots for feedback says, looks good, everything inside of the eye needs a little bit more detail, but the skills are amazing. So the students kind of looked at uh, the feedback once everything was done and then they kind of took that feedback to update their artwork. So it was very useful amount of time we spent in class today kind of improving our artwork.
And I will say every time I do these types of gallery walks where the students give feedback, it's always very useful. We talk about, you know, what are things that are actually um, constructive that we can tell people that they can actually improve upon. And they take that and they really, um, give really awesome feedback to their peers and so a lot of the time I see that the artwork is amazing once they um, take into account what their peers say because a lot of the times we can tell students what they need to improve upon but they don't really understand it in our words but a fifth grader can tell another fifth grader hey I think you should work on this and they actually understand it and appreciate um, that feedback a lot more so it definitely helps improve um, the artwork and also improve the student's attitude as they're working because they do want to um, show their peers that they actually take their feedback seriously so it can be very beneficial in the classroom. <sighs> Today is normally the busiest day of my week so it has been a very long day but it's been a good day um we've had lots of progress in all the wonderful art pieces that we've made today but i am tired for sure it is four o'clock and i still need to clean my classroom and of course we know that if this is real life and we're being super authentic that the day is not over once we leave the classroom so of course there's still many other things to do but as of right now i am done with my school day um, and I still have the rest of my day that I will spend with my family. So I am going to clean up my classroom, clean up um, and get ready for tomorrow because tomorrow is another really long day. Um, and get back at it. Let's get started on cleaning up this classroom and then we can go home because now it's time to eat again. I'm getting a little hungry, which means I have to make dinner. We might eat out tonight. Anyway, I'll see you at home. <laughs> okay, so it's the end of the day and I am in my car. I need to go pick up my daughter and finish off the day with a few little things. So let's go pick her up. Hey, go home. Hey, get out. Hi, Dad. Yeah, we get out. Let's get out. So this is my floor as of right now because she hasn't started playing yet. We all know it won't stay like this for very long. Yeah. So we're gonna play for a little bit and then I will start dinner. Okay, so if you're anything like me at the end of the day, um, when it's time to make dinner, you want something really fast that's gonna you know, satisfy everybody. So I always end up using my air fryers every single night. So I have my air fryer going and my pot in the background and it'll be done really soon. You ready to eat? dinner is done okay everybody so that's it that is my day i am going to do a little bit of exercising and that's gonna be it because i'm back at it again tomorrow i really hope there was something in this video that you can take back to your classroom and if you really like this day in the life as an art teacher video don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the art of education university so you can see more videos just like this one so until next time, rock it out and I'll see you later.